It's the height of the shopping season. Despite the odds of a global pandemic, Black Friday and the holiday spirit have lifted people off their couches to go out and buy gifts. Maybe you join them, or maybe you're just watching ads from your living room, but the spirit of gift giving is in the air. You watch as an Apple advertisement appears on the screen in front of you. What's this? They're no longer providing a full charger with each iPhone to reduce production and help the environment? You walk into your favorite clothing store, whether it be Zara or H&M, and you gaze at the sustainable wear tags and signs scattered throughout the store. Yes, the holiday spirit truly is rushing through the air, but you start to realize something else is there too, the push of giant corporations to appear environmentally friendly. Many people seem to be happy that they are doing their part to help the environment. However, is their happiness too good to be true? This advertising gimmick, known as greenwashing, has become a new trend that has infiltrated many aspects of everyday life. Greenwashing occurs when companies use vague words such as green, eco-friendly, or all-natural to make their image seem more sustainable. However, these labels do not match up to the company's actual environmental impact. Even worse, these companies, usually mega corporations and sometimes politicians, try to hide their appalling environmental records with the grand public gesture towards green causes. Not only is greenwashing a deceitful marketing ploy, but it is also very dangerous in the ways it holds individuals responsible for climate action, distracting from the institutions and megacorporations that are the main drivers of environmental destruction. You may be wondering how we arrived at this point. How do we become so transfixed on individual action when it comes to helping the environment? While there is no one specific cause, tendencies towards individualization have always run deep in American environmentalism. Early environmental authors, such as Thoreau and Muir, discussed nature as a source for individual transcendentalism, personal discovery, and exploration. Likewise, the ideology of manifest destiny has left a lingering mark on individuals' culture in America. Some analysts note that mainstream environmentalism has technocratic, managerial roots, and therefore always has been a polite movement more interested in fine-tuning industrial society, rather than critiquing its core tenets. Given this, it is not wholly surprising that the current environmental movement has become absorbed by capitalism and spit back out in the form of green consumerism. Among millennials, being green by purchasing eco-friendly products has become a popular trend. Purchasing sustainable products allows them to feel satisfied with making a positive impact. However, it conceals the fact that the production of their purchase still contributes to the larger issues of overconsumption and waste. We are faced with this issue every day. So let's take a look at the average day of running errands for a young American concerned about being eco-friendly. You start your day by heading to the gas station to fill up your car. Surrounding the pumps are dozens of ads for BP's pledge to the transition of cleaner energy fused with green colors and images of a clean earth. Don't be fooled by these types of ads from big oil companies. BP, among many others, spent millions on green PR advertising campaigns. In reality, little to no money is actually spent on these inaccurate accounts of support for green movements when compared to how 96% of BP's annual expenditure is still on oil and gas extraction with no actual promise to stop anytime soon. While at the gas station, you start to get thirsty and you head inside to grab a drink. Luckily, there are plenty of eco-friendly water bottle choices available from Fiji water, the most untouched and natural water, to the eco-plant design Dasani bottles. But don't be fooled by the label there is no such thing as an eco-friendly plastic water bottle. It may sound great that the bottle is 100% recyclable, but out of 35 billion plastic water bottles thrown away in the U.S. each year, less than a quarter actually get recycled. The market for recyclables is now practically non-existent, and plastic production has irreversible consequences on the earth and will continue to for millions of years after humans are gone. Next, you drive across town to the Whole Foods, because they have the best produce and arguably the healthiest options for food. The name says it all, right? When it comes to food, it can be especially easy to be tricked by the packaging and labels that have earthy designs claiming things like health food and all natural. However, keep in mind that there are no regulations on the images a company can use on their packaging. Chances are if you cannot pronounce over half the ingredients on the back of a food item, it cannot be all that great for you. Lastly, you head to the mall to get some last-minute Christmas presents. You see large signs for H&M's new sustainable fashion collection, full of earth-toned, natural-looking clothes. This looks too good to be true, so don't be fooled by the common tricks of greenwashing in the fashion industry. 
Companies like Zara and H&M have launched sustainable clothing lines where clothes are allegedly made from recycled materials and used recycled water in washing stages to avoid wasting water. Yet, both companies are huge contributors to fast fashion. This occurs when inexpensive clothing is mass-produced rapidly, but the quick production creates huge amounts of bulk leftover, which ends up being piles and piles of litter. Less than 1% of H&M's clothing actually includes recycled materials, but they tend not to focus on that side of the story. It may seem overwhelming, presented with the reality of the amount of greenwashing that occurs behind the companies we see every day. However, if you do your research and follow some simple tricks, you'll be better able to identify and avoid brands that are clearly trying to mislead consumers. 1. Beware of the branding. Don't be fooled by earthy packaging and emphasized buzzwords such as all-natural, eco-friendly, and sustainably produced. Bypass the packaging and always read the labels and nutritions. 2. Consider the product's life cycle. Items that claim to be sustainable may be lying if their packaging, manufacturing, and processing occurs at multiple stages around the world. Consider what trade-offs a company might be concealing when they advertise a single aspect of production through vague words, such as made from recycled materials. 3. Look at the certifications and do your research. Many brands actually do live up to what they advertise and have trusted stamps of certification. Many seals, such as USDA and the Green Seal, require vigorous regulations that companies must pass to be certified, and these seals can be trusted to ensure that you're getting products that are actually healthy for you and safe for the environment. Four, question the necessity of the purchases and strive to buy less. Green purchases are not the solution to the environmental crisis, but we can make a difference if we all try to consume drastically less of the things that are not essential to human health and well-being. Despite what brands will advertise and try to sell, the greenest type of product is no product at all. Recognizing greenwashing is crucial to help the climate narrative broaden to think more institutionally. The main industries driving climate change must be held accountable for their actions, and we can do this by realizing the power of collection, collective action over individual consumption.